Oh, thank you very much, Jensen, for the introduction. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, Jensen asked me to um, propose um, or ask a few questions about why the um, air quality or, in, or the building environment problems in China or in other developing countries are especially important. And by looking at the literature, I try to find uh, a few facts to support the uh, basis of my question. So this is uh, a uh, map produced by NASA uh, a couple of years ago regarding the uh, PM 2.5 distribution in the world. And as you can see, uh, this is China. Uh, we are now here in that point. And definitely you see the highest concentration, in fact, is uh, around Beijing, Tianjin, and Hebei provinces. And of course, you definitely see a lot of other particles in North Africa because of the desert, et cetera. But the particles generated in northern part of China are mainly from the coal combustion, uh, uh, et cetera, or car, et cetera. So those are more or less uh, human, uh, due to human activities. And therefore, China itself indeed uh, proposed a very challenging uh, problem to solve. Then uh, if you look at the, um, the Chinese city, okay, um, probably that map doesn't show uh, where the cities are. This is the, the data uh, in China which shows 74 major Chinese cities. And then you can see uh, by using the Chinese standard of air quality, which is already three times higher than the WHO uh, standard, uh, as you can see here, we get a, a hazardous uh, condition. It's uh, about 5.8%. And then with unhealthy 13, unhealthy, and unhealthy for a sensitive group. So as you can see, already a half of the time, it's not really suitable for living. So let's really impose a, a very serious out of uh, problems. And of course, if you, uh, we use the WHO uh, standard, and then the situation will become even worse. And that's what I said for a whole year. And I plotted here, those are the data we collected from the uh, uh, US Embassy in Beijing. Uh, the uh, US Embassy has a monitoring station just inside of the embassy compound which is in the heart of uh, the city of Beijing. And this is the data they measure in the past four years. And as you can see, in some occasions, the uh, PM 2.5 can reach to almost 1,000 micrograms per cubic meter of air. And that's pretty dense. And you also can see probably less than a month, uh, less than winter month, less summer, and then less winter again. So in general, you also see the winter uh, condition is particularly uh, worse. And that's because um, the, during the heating period, Beijing used a lot of uh, boilers uh, to produce um, hot water, uh, distribute the hot water for heating. That makes the situation pretty bad. So the, I also propose, uh, shows it here, let's say whose limit is 20 microgram. So as you can see, by using whose data, Beijing is more or less a city not livable. Then uh, if you want to just give a, a, a direct visual effect of the pollution, all right? So a very famous uh, Beijing uh, central, Chinese central TV station uh, building is there. So more or less it's a pretty foggy situation. And that uh, is a, a case. And this is another one in Xi'an during a clear day you see this uh, uh, a pagoda uh, tower is pretty easy to see. And then uh, when, in this case, with uh, the uh, pollution of 427, is not 1,000, then you don't see that. So in a lot of cases, I uh, stay at half time in Tianjin. 
sometimes it's pretty hard for me to see across the street because the pollution was pretty high. And not only the outdoor uh, air quality is bad, indoor air quality is also pretty poor. And of course, most of us are doing uh, indoor environmental studies. And especially you look at around, then, uh, uh, for example, just like in this building, all, most of the material inside are artificial. So I remember uh, in several occasions, uh, in indoor air presentation shows uh, how indoor chemicals are very different. And I think of, uh, for matter high, it's pretty high, uh, especially in China. So those are well known, and therefore I don't want to uh, show you all the data again. Now, outdoor pollution can be easily transported into the indoor spaces. And these are the, a few cities uh, which shows uh, the um, all limited uh, ratio. That means how many percent of the time outdoor uh, pollution get indoor and indoor condition exceed the food limit. So as you can see uh, here, um, Nanjing is the uh, northern city. I mean, close to northern part of China. It's in the middle. It's a higher. But then you go to south, for example, uh, Shanghai is a little bit lo lower, and then Wuhan also lower. So this is more or less in Yangtze uh, River uh, region. It's in the middle of China. It's already show very significant um, impact there. Now, how the outdoor particles get into indoors? That's uh, three routes. The first one is by mechanical ventilation. Of course, we use the air conditioning systems. A lot of uh, commercial buildings, uh, government offices uh, and office buildings, uh, we have a uh, central air conditioning system. But we don't use a HEPA filter for it. And conventional uh, filter cannot really get rid of PM2.5. So this is a major source. The second source is by natural ventilation. Uh, Chinese um, uh, has uh, the tradition just to use natural ventilation. Nobody is in the northern part or in the southern part. So you always open the uh, window for fresh air. I mean, th 20, 30 years ago, yes, you open the window, you get a fresh air. Now today, you open the window, you get a dirty air. So that's a huge difference. And even you try to close the window, like in northern part of China, especially in far uh, northeast, like Harbin, then there's still a lot of infiltration. So um, I look at the data, a lot of uh, measurement they did at the Tsinghua University. They show typically the Chinese uh, uh, residential building with the infiltration about one air change rate per hour. And if you open the uh, window, then on average, we might get about three air change rate per hour. So that's uh, why you get a, uh, the indoor concentration very high. Now for the, uh, this uh, three part, definitely we have the equation you can calculate. For example, importation you can calculate by using X-ray standard to, um, this is uh, through the cracks length. And natural ventilation, it really is based on the pressure differential. And also me, uh, mechanical ventilation, um, we use the minimum one, 2.5. Of course, you have, still have to add the floor uh, ventilation for uh, per floor area. It's uh, higher than this. So if I use those uh, data, and then I calculate how much uh, um, penetration could be, so uh, if I use the ozone, outdoor ozone as an example, so this is a uh, distribution of uh, in, in the US. Because the US, we don't really measure any particles, but you can definitely measure the ozones. And this is the indoor uh, situation. So as you can see, the indoor itself does not really produce a lot of ozone. So ozone more or less work like a tracer gas. So as you can see, when outdoor ozone is high, indoor is also pretty high. So that's a very positive correlation. And that's um, uh, due to these uh, three laws. And if we look at the um, China situation, we have the particles. Let's study already show 
you know, you have a different type of uh, ventilation system, either by exhaust fan or by window type of air conditioner or by using this um, uh, mechanical air conditioning or natural ventilation. That's a very positive correlation. This is the average uh, our indoor outdoor uh, ratio of PM10, and this is a priority, that's an outdoor concentration, that's an indoor concentration, more or less linear. But of course, you have some reduction. And that's because the PM10 definitely you have the deposition uh, through the cracks, uh, through the air conditioning units, and therefore it's not really one to one. But the, the uh, ratio is more or less um, uh, linear. And of course, uh, um, in the past, people say, well, Chinese tend to spend more time in the outdoors. But due to the improvement on the living standard, today Chinese do spend a lot of time indoors. So this is just a, a few uh, modern picture of, of uh, the Chinese life. You know, they drive cars as well, attend meetings like us, and work on even higher density office. And when you spend the home, uh, the same thing. You know, just like uh, in developed country. So let's study show at least 80% of the time of Chinese time you spend it indoors. And that's why this uh, uh, outdoor pollution plus indoor pollution lead to very significant problems uh, for the health. So let's say uh, a study did um, a couple of years ago, just look for the outdoor aerosol concentration, you know, from the uh, 1960s to the current one, you see this is uh, increasing. And there's also a indoor, uh, I mean, lung cancer. So this is not really in linear scale, but you look at the trend here, it's a very positive trend between the aerosol concentration and the lung cancer. So this is a uh, uh, mortality. So let's say the death there, there's a very significant um, correlation. And this is um, why people care about that. And if you go to China, especially when it's a foggy day, and then you definitely hear, you know, uh, it's in TV station or advertisement, that's the biggest sales of uh, air purifier. So this air purifier sale in the past few years just increased dramatically. That's because the outdoor pollution is not getting lighter, it's getting heavier. And this is, the cell is very interesting. You know, this is shows uh, the uh, November uh, through December period of time. And there's uh, a outdoor concentration, uh, PM 2.5, okay, outdoor concentration shows this dash line. So when outdoor concentration goes high, everyone go to the shop to buy the purifier. And that's, uh, uh, people know this is a very important one, try to get the, uh, indoor air cleaned. But of course, uh, still a lot of problem how to use um, uh, particle uh, uh, purifier. My sister bought one, and then he, she complained uh, it didn't work recently. And then I look at the air purifier, it's full with the uh, particles. And she, he said, uh, do I need to change the filters? And I said, yes, you did. So, I mean, the, they don't tell you uh, you need to change the filters, okay? The, often the manufacturer said, you buy the air purifier, it's a only one-time investment, and then you get a very clean air. But in fact, the maintenance of an air purifier is also very expensive because we use a HEPA filter uh, for that. And therefore, we have a number of uh, questions here. The first one, you know, we still don't know. And that's a question is what is the major indoor pollutant source in China? It's still for us, we are studying that, but do we have the data for Chinese uh, product? Because, um, you know, this year um, we moved the office at the Purdue University, and it's a brand new building. I moved there, I don't smell any VOC. And then uh, I live in Tianjin uh, a couple of years ago. There was a new building, it was ventilated for a year. I moved in and I still uh, smell the VOCs and my wife was there and then she got a headache. So the same 
look like a similar type of buildings, but the pollutant can be different. And also the um, indoor outdoor particular uh, penetration, do we have that type of information? And then do we have the right tool to calculate uh, how much outdoor pollutant really came to indoor? Then if we want to control it, you know, buying an air purifier will do the job. You know, sometimes uh, the smaller air purifier is cheaper and some is bigger. Bigger is more expensive, that they don't really tell you how big the area an air purifier can serve. So those are, I think, the um, normal uh, residents need to have this type of information, which is not really uh, provided by many uh, manufacturers. And then my final question is, do we have the concrete evidence on the, uh, of the indoor pollutants and the occupant health. Because uh, we show the, uh, I show here some correlation, but of course uh, many people will challenge me. That may be not due to the, uh, the particles uh, uh, from the outdoor pollution. You know, a lot of Chinese are smokers. So well, that's really a major reason or is it because of outdoor pollution. So I think that's a lot of unanswered questions, and I think this may uh, serve as something for discussion later uh, in the workshop. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Yenchen.